In today's video, we are going to go over buoyancy, Archimedes' principle, as it relates to floating objects. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to support our channel, Step-by-Step Step Science. Please subscribe to our channel, click the notifications bell, leave us a nice positive comment, give us a nice positive thumbs up, and don't forget to share this video. In addition to that, we made a bunch of other teaching learning materials that you can find at our Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below, and let's get started with Archimedes' principle. Remember that Archimedes' principle says that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced by an object. If the object sinks, then the volume displaced is equal to the volume of the object. If the object floats, the volume displaced equals the volume of the object that is beneath the surface of the water. Now remember, this is the equation that we use to calculate the buoyant force. It says that the buoyant force is equal to the density of the fluid, because the buoyant force comes from the fluid, times g times the volume of the fluid that is displaced. Remember, if the volume sinks, the volume is equal to the volume of the object. If the volume floats, then the volume displaced is equal to the volume of the object that is beneath the surface of the water. Now, Archimedes' principle says that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced by an object. Now, that's a little different than what this equation says, but we can get from this equation to this equation by using the density formula, because we know that the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume. We can then solve that equation for the mass. The mass of the fluid is equal to the density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid. And we can see here that we have the density of the fluid in both equations, and we have the volume of the fluid in both equations, which means that I can set, substitute the mass of the fluid into this equation, and then I get that another equation for calculating the buoyant force is that the buoyant force is equal to the mass of the fluid that is displaced times g. The mass times g is the weight of that fluid, and that's what it says right here. The buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced. The buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced. So we can use this equation if we know the mass, or if we know the density of the volume, we can use this equation to calculate the buoyant force. Now let's look at a couple examples. Let's say we have an object, and that object is going to be something like a hammer, which is relatively heavy, made out of metal. And if we put that in water, it's going to sink. Well, why is it going to sink? Well, it's going to sink because the gravitational force, the weight of the object, is greater than the buoyant force. Another way we can say that from Archimedes' principle is that the weight of the object is greater than the weight of the fluid, the weight of the volume of the fluid that is displaced, in this case, water. And therefore, it's going to sink. Now, for floating objects, let's say we put an object in water, we put it underwater. When it's fully underwater, then, and let's say that's a piece of wood and we know it's going to float, it will float because the weight of the object is less than the buoyant force. The buoyant force is greater than the weight of the object. Now, from Archimedes' principle, that means that the weight of the fluid that is displaced is greater than the weight of the object, and therefore the object is going to float. When it actually gets up there and is floating, then the buoyant force and the weight of the object will be the same, because it will be in equilibrium. It won't be moving. There's two forces acting on the object, the weight and the buoyant force, and when it's floating there on the surface and not moving, we know that those two forces are equal to each other. Now, we're going to calculate uh, how we're going to calculate um, how to determine whether something is sinking or floating. And let's just say that we have a piece of wood here, and the wood is in water. Now, we know the wood is most likely less dense than water, because most wood is less dense than water, and it's going to float. But let's figure out why that is using the buoyant force in Archimedes' principle. That object has a weight. The weight pulls down. The buoyant force pushes up. Now, we know that object is most likely going to float, and it's going to float because the buoyant force is greater than the weight of the object. Now, let's just say that the object, that piece of wood, has a density of 650 kilograms per meter cubed, and the volume of that object is 2 cubic meters. Now, we can calculate the weight. 
Then we can calculate the buoyant force, and then we'll see why, using those two forces, that the object actually is going to float up to the surface. So the weight of the object we can get using Newton's second law, which is Fg equals mg, F equals ma, but in this case g because we're talking about gravitational force. We don't know the mass, but we know the density equation. We know the mass is equal to density times the volume. I gave you the density. I gave you the volume. We can calculate that the weight of that object is 650, its density, times its volume, times g, and we find out that that object weighs 12,753 newtons. Now, when it's underwater, it's completely submerged underwater, the buoyant force has to be greater to get it to float. And let's see, now we can calculate the buoyant force. Okay, the buoyant force is that the buoyant force is equal to the density of the fluid times G times the volume of the fluid that is displaced. Okay, now we are going to assume that we're going to calculate the maximum buoyant force when the object is actually underwater. Okay, so this is when it's underwater. This is the buoyant force that's going to cause it to rise up to the surface. And we know the density of the fluid, because that's where the buoyant force comes from, from the fluid, is water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed times G times the volume of the object, which is therefore the volume of the fluid that is displaced. And we're going to use the full two meters because we're calculating the maximum when the object is underwater. And we get that the buoyant force is 19,620 19, newtons. And indeed, the buoyant force when the object is underwater is greater than the weight and the object is going to float to the surface. Now, when the object gets to the surface, the buoyant force and the weight force have to be equal to each other. So let's talk about that next and how we can show that mathematically. So when the object floats, like we said, the weight and the buoyant force have to be equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. And the when an object floats, any floating object displaces its own weight in that fluid, or the, in this case, the weight of, the wa of that object in water. We can also say that the weight of the displaced fluid will be equal to the weight of the object. Now let's see if we can calculate the weight of the fluid that is displaced and show that it is equal to the weight of the object. So the object has a weight of 12,753. We know when it's floating and the buoyant force has to be 12,753. Those two are equal and we want to show how we're going to determine that when the object is floating, the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the object. Now, we can use Archimedes' principle, the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced. Here's the equation for the buoyant force. Here's the equation we used originally to derive this equation. And I'm going to, um, I can cancel out the g's here, because it's g on both sides. And then I'm going to rearrange this equation so we have two ratios that are going to be set equal to each other. All I did was divide both sides of this equation by the total volume of the object, the volume of the object. And then I divided by the density of the fluid, and I came up with this ratio. This ratio says that the volume of the fluid that is displaced divided by the total volume of the object equals the density of the object divided by the density of the fluid. Now, we know the density of the object is 650 kilograms per meter cubed. I told you that earlier. And we know the density of water is 1,000. So that means that the ratio of the amount of the object that will be underwater to the total amount, total volume of that object, is going to be 0.65. Or that tells us that 65% of the object will be underwater, in this case, this piece of wood. Now, we want to get the 65% of the volume and 65% of the mass Find the weight of that 65%, and hopefully it'll be 12,753. So once again, 65% of this piece of wood will be underwater. We know the density. We know the volume. We know the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced. And the volume that will be submerged, the volume that's underwater, will be equal to the total volume times 0.65, or 65% of the total volume. 
And that means that the volume that will be underwater will be 1.3 cubic meters. That volume will be equal to, to get the mass, we can just take the density times the volume, and we get that the density of the water times the volume that's being displaced is going to be 13,000 kilograms. So when we put this piece of wood in water, 65% of it will be underwater. That will be 1.3 meters cubed. That means it's going to displace 1.3 cubic meters of water. The mass of that much water is 1,300 kilograms, and the weight of that much water is the mass times 9.81, and that, as you will see, comes up to be 12,753. So therefore, you can see that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the water that is displaced by that object, okay? And those two forces, the gravitational force and the buoyant force, when the object is floating, have to be equal to each other. And in this case, when the object is floating, 0.65% of it, or 1.3 cubic meters, or 1,300 kilograms of water are displaced, and that has a weight of 12,753 newtons. So there you go. We did a nice introduction to Archimedes' principle, and then we showed you how to work with Archimedes' principle and floating objects. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following five things. Please subscribe, subscribe to our channel, support our channel, Step by Step Science. Click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Leave us a nice positive comment. Give us a thumbs up and don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video.